All right, everybody. So in this video, we're going to focus on the different glands and some of the hormones that they excrete and primarily getting you familiar with the different names of these glands. So first and foremost, a gland is a part of the body that creates and, and or releases the hormones into the bloodstream. So this is really important. So how do hormones get into the bloodstream? They're going to be released from a gland, right? How they get released, different story. We'll talk about that in a few minutes because it gets a little bit, there's a, there's a few options here. So let's start off with this. I would, I think it's really important for you guys to look at this picture and familiarize yourself with these different glands because a lot of times it's nice in that it's the name of the organ or the different location of the body. So for example, um, the adrenal glands are on top of the kidneys and the pancreas itself really is an organ that is going to be one of the major glands of the body. So sometimes when you hear pancreas, yes, it's an organ, but it's also a gland in that it's going to release a lot of the hormones. Adrenal glands, you may be familiar with them or not, but they're on top of the kidneys. So if you're familiar with the kidneys, it'll be easier to see where the adrenal glands are. And then in males and females, the reproductive organs, the ovary and the testes in males are also going to be major glands that are going to reproduce or that are going to release major hormones in the body. The master gland, the one that you're going to hear a lot in this course and in general is the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland is known because it is the master gland, like I said, because it's used to regulate a lot of other hormones. So one of the things you're going to see in the following slides is a lot of these glands are going to release hormones that are going to bind to other glands to release other hormones. So it's kind of like a domino effect. So one influences the other, which influences another, which influences another. And in this case, we call this a tropic or trophic uh, not traffic, a tropic cascade. So it's a cascading effect. So tropic cascade uh, just means that one influences another. So we will see a little bit more of that in just a second. Here are some examples of hormones in the body. And some of these are going to be ones you may have heard before, maybe not. So starting, let I'm, I'm just going to skip down a little bit to something you may have heard before, like epinephrine. So epinephrine is a great example of a hormone that is found in the body. Um, we talked about this in last semester. So you're familiar a little bit with epinephrine or norepinephrine, right? These are different examples of hormones. Um, you may have heard of oxytocin or ADH, antidiuretic hormone. So there's a whole bunch of different types of hormones. My suggestion is to do your best to see which ones you may have heard before, see which ones that make sense to you. And what I mean by that is by reading the name and trying to figure out what it means, right? So for example, if you know what cortisol is, so cortisol is another hormone down here. If you know what cortisol is, then this one up here, the corticotropin releasing hormone, should make a little bit of sense because cortico, it's in the name for cortisol, it's a releasing hormone, meaning it's the hormone that you use to release cortisol. So these are the kinds of things I'm talking about. Try not to get overwhelmed with the names. And also, before you memorize the abbreviations, which some people will do, just Try reading the name and trying to figure it out. Again, this is where we can talk as well, but just try to figure that out yourself because sometimes when you think about it, it makes sense. Um, another great example is GH. A lot of people get, you know, just in general, may get thrown off with GH, trying to memorize what GH is. If you just remember or read that GH stands for growth hormone, I think you can figure out what growth hormone is responsible for. And if you can't, it's for growth. So again, sarcasm, I'm trying to be funny, you can't see my face, but um, the idea is take your time with these and please do not overwhelm yourselves and do too much at once. Try to read through these, see how many you know, and then from there, we can figure, figure out where to go from there.
Anyways, I got a little sidetracked. Another thing to keep in mind is the location. So some of these hormones are found in certain regions. So again, if you're looking at the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus is responsible for releasing these hormones, right? Anterior pituitary, these hormones, and so on. And they have different roles in the body. And the last thing to discuss, and you're going to see this in the next slide, is there are different hormones based on what they are made of. All right, so hormones can be made of amines or amino acids, peptides, which are a little bit longer versions of amino acids, right? Um, proteins, which are longer chains. These are the ones you're going to see a lot more of. Proteins is a big one. Peptides is a big one. So, so again, these are proteins or amino acids. They're made of protein. Um, and then you're also going to see glycoproteins, which include glyco sugar, right? So these are proteins that also have carbohydrates on them, sugar. And the other big one and a very distinctly important one are going to be your steroids. And steroids are made of cholesterol, which are fats. So we're going to see these in a few minutes and in the, in the next few slides. And we're going to talk about how important the different hormone composition is. So what are they made of? Like proteins, sugars, or fats. Seeing how important that is in the regulation of hormones in the body. If you have any questions, please let me know.